Preparedness at DHEC, and I am the state coordinator for our volunteer program. We have two components of our volunteer program. We have the ESAR VIP, which is the emergency systems for advanced registration of volunteer health professionals, and then we have the Medical Reserve Corps. So hopefully during the past maybe five, six years or uh, probably since maybe 2004, 2005, you've heard something about these programs. I'm hoping you have. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you about DHEC's program, our volunteer program, and how we use volunteers. And I want to talk to you about the initiatives behind the programs. Both of these programs, and I'm, first I'm going to talk to you about ESAR VIP were created out of 9-11, and then of course Katrina too. Between that lapse of time, there was still no coordination or anything with volunteer programs. But with 9-11, what happened is after the incident, hordes, just literally thousands of volunteers, what we call unaffiliated or spontaneous volunteers, showed up on the disaster scene, and of course area hospitals, and they were wanting to lend their services. But there was no coordination, no way to verify their identities, much less their credentials. And so what happened is they weren't utilized, and it presented a big problem for health officials. They ended up having to set up a whole other city just to be able to house these volunteers to provide sanitation and food. What they learned in lessons learned later is that a lot of these folks were health care providers. A lot of them were physicians and nurses, you know, EMTs, and that they really could have used the help, especially in Katrina, but they just didn't have that coordination in place to be able to verify or know who was really equipped to perform duties and who really wasn't. And they did have some incidents where people claimed to be someone that they weren't. So the federal government in 2002 passed the Public Health Security and Bioterrorism Preparedness and Response Act. And Congress basically did a Section 107 that allocated funding to the states through Health and Human Services to develop ESAR VIP database systems. Now, what is ESAR VIP? Essentially, a long acronym for a system. It is a registration system. It's much like when you are employed in a hospital and you have to go through that uh, registration process, lots of times. Sometimes it's paper, but lots of times it's now systems, and then the systems capture all of your information and then verify it. It's the same thing. ESAR VIP basically is a credentialing system, and all the states have them. We have 62 states and territories. All of them have been mandated through ASPR, your Assistant Secretary of Preparedness and Response, to develop these systems. We've been doing this for years. Our program at DHEC has been at um, active ever since 2006. Some of the other states be started before that back in 2004. And then we had pilot states as well. So as soon after 2002, these systems started rolling out. Now, ESARVIP is a national network of state-based systems. They, ver they verify identity and credentials of health professionals so that they can move these folks across state lines and use them within the state as well. The systems have to meet a set of credentialing standards, and that just makes sense. They all have to capture certain information on license and specialties, and then they have to resource type these all at the same levels. There are four levels to an ESAR VIP system. The first level basically says that a volunteer health professional has some kind of hospital privileging. The second level says that the volunteer has some kind of clinical privileging. The third is basically a health volunteer that has a state license of some sort. And then the fourth means that a volunteer has some kind of a medical history. This could be a retired person who has not kept up their licensure or somebody who has the education. In South Carolina, we have an additional level because we like to use paraprofessional volunteers to help with our logistics and support our staff. So we have a level, level five, which is basically for ham radio operators, for administrators, and folks like that. The goal of the ESAR VIP program is to resolve in advance the numerous problems or challenges faced with trying to utilize healthcare volunteers in a complex emergency situation. In South Carolina, our ESAR VIP system is called SC-SERV. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's 
web-based, it's secure, it's encrypted, and you can go in and register. And I'm going to see if I can open this link. So for those of you who are listening audio and through web-based for the PowerPoint, if you click on that top link, hopefully it will open and take you to SE Serve. The URL is scserv.gov, and this is what the registration system looks like for South Carolina. And once you arrive here at the home page, you can open up numerous links that will tell you about the Medical Reserve Corps. It will take you to DHEC's emergency response page. Um, it will tell you our trainings that we offer. And also, there's a Q&A that also will tell you more about the Medical Reserve Corps pro program and the ESARVIT program, both at the state level and the national level. This yes, this is different from DMAT. That's yet another whole subset of NDMS. And then you have other volunteer programs. I mean, you've got American Red Cross. You've got CERT, C-E-R-T. You have Citizens Corps, those. But I'm glad you brought that up because what we're finding and what's going to happen because the feds have really put the money behind this, because they've passed those um, laws, those mandates to build these systems, they are really wanting to eliminate spontaneous volunteers. It's just very problematic. So what you're going to find is when something happens nationally or even in a state, at the state, local response level, you're going to really have to be a member of one of those organizations to be able to be used. They are not going to accept spontaneous volunteers anymore. Which, you know, back with 9-11, and um, Shirley Hollinsworth is over the emergency preparedness. She's the director for DHEC's Office of Public Health Preparedness. Now, I wasn't on board when Katrina happened. Shirley was. She worked that response effort. And, of course, they moved patients into South Carolina from that. But um, Shirley just talked about those complications with that. And, and what you're just going to find is physicians were lined up. They were sitting in aircraft. They wanted to deploy to Katrina, and it just didn't happen. It was very complicated. And so you're just going to see, as time goes on, the feds do not support spontaneous volunteers, and it's just very complicated at the state level as well. So that's why I'm really here today is to tell you about the volunteer program, to give you that portal from being for being able to be utilized in the future if you want to be a part of a volunteer system. What kind of participation do you have in this? Uh, SCSERV? We have about 1,600 volunteers right now, and I'll show you that in a little bit too, because the vast majority of our volunteers are medical volunteers. In order, though, to be a part or complete an application for SCSERV, Number one, volunteers have to register into the system. If they want to participate in our program, they have to register. They have to complete the profile. And I promise you, the profile is nothing like filling one out for your hospital. I promise you. The only heavy part of ours is getting into those health requirements. It does have a health history page, and, and it does ask for vaccinations and things like that. But it's not going to be as strenuous as filling one out for a hospital. And, of course, we are fixing to start conducting criminal history checks on our volunteers. This is new, but the federal level, they are asking states to do this. We have found the need to do it in South Carolina, so we will be conducting SLED background checks. However, I will tell you, we don't capture Social Security numbers in our database. Even though it's encrypted, we don't do that. In order to conduct a SLED history check, we'll be capturing that on a consent form. And that will be maintained in our Office of Personnel, and it's only for this. And that information's not told to anyone. Basically, once the volunteer gives us the information, they run the check, it's either a yes or no for the program. So that information is kept very private and confidential. Okay. Our health volunteers, like I said, we have about 1,600 volunteers, and this shows you a little bit of our health volunteers. Mostly we have nurses in our database, and I don't know if you can see way back there, but we have about 552 nurses participating. This is your, um, your registered nurses, your APRNs, your LPNs. Physicians, we have just a small number of physicians. It's actually gone down over the years, and I think I can explain a little bit as to why 
that has happened a little bit later on. Then it goes on down to Dennis. I think the next biggest group we have are our social workers, our behavioral health folk. We have about 130 of those. And then our next group would be our EMTs or our paramedics. And we have about 88 of those to date. Now, with our ESAR VIP system, we have all of these folks registered. But there's more to them just being registered in a database. Volunteers really need to be trained. They need to participate in exercises. And then they need to be able to participate in real events. So we decided in South Carolina to develop the Medical Reserve Corps program. ESAR VIP first, and about a year later, we actually registered eight Medical Reserve Corps with the Surgeon General's office and placed each of them in our public health regions. And they cover the entire state of South Carolina. We're the first state in the nation to provide statewide coverage of the Medical Reserve Corps program. But it is our means of organizing them once they're in the database and providing that. And the purpose of them is to improve, of course, the health and safety of the communities, the local community, assist local community during a public health emergency, and then, of course, to supplement existing local emergency and public health resources. The mission is to engage our volunteers to strengthen public health, our emergency response, and community resiliency. So there are a lot of programs under the Medical Reserve Corps at the federal level that help to provide education we had the um, Let's Get Moving campaign with Mrs. Obama. We also have your um, healthy programs, heart programs, getting active, taking care of child obesity, and these kind of things, too. So it's a little bit above and beyond just emergency response, but it is public health. Like I said, though, it's our means of organizing our volunteers and training them and engaging them in our activities and then real events. This is what our MRCs look like. This is how they're dispersed across the state. So we have eight. With our Medical Reserve Corps, the training really isn't that bad. We provide an MRC orientation. With that comes a handbook. We have our ICS 100 and 700. We ask for folks to take this online and send in certificates. And then we have our ESF, which is our emergency support function teams for health and medical. DHEC is tasked under the South Carolina Emergency Operations Plan as ESF-8. And so we have teams built under that. So an emergency response, we assemble at our, our local emergency operations centers. We assemble at the state emergency operations center, and we engage in these emergency response activities. We have special medical need shelters, mass immunization clinics, SC Med medical surge units, behavioral health teams, epidemiology teams, points of dispensing, and community assessment teams. Also in the future, we're hoping to create a hospital response team for surge capability and our capacity, and then our radiological response team for population monitoring. Requirements for health and readiness for our volunteers to participate. DHEC has an annual training OSHA. Now, we know physicians wrote the book. It's not that kind of training. It's a very brief and even can be a just-in-time training, but basically tells you what DHEC will do if you get a needle stick or something like that. So it's basically what we will do to take care of you. And the DHEC HIPAA is usually just in time, or it can actually be just a disclosure form that the person signs. Now, within our database is that health screening tool, which captures vaccinations, medical tests, and skill assessments. And those things, once they're entered into the database, are actually reviewed by an employee health nurse at the local level. Legal protections. I had mentioned earlier to you that we've seen a little bit of a collapse in the physicians registering into our database, and this is usually the cause. I'm just going to tell you up front. We have wonderful liability protection. 
You are covered under our tort liability coverage, our DHEC automobile liability policy, the state tort liability policy, the professional liability policy we DHEC. You have to sign a volunteer agreement which activates that protection. However, and this is the catch-all, we do not have workers' compensation because, of course, volunteers are not employees. And by law, our purchaser is the insurance reserve fund, and they do not cover volunteers. So in order to do that, we have to change laws. We've been working on this for quite some time and would like to continue working on it in the future. We have other state agencies that use volunteers. We have our emergency management division that's behind this initiative to, to provide workers' comp or some kind of insurance coverage. So we'll continue to work on that. Okay, some of the response activities we've participated in so far. The Dixie Crystal Sugar Plant explosion down in Savannah, Georgia. Y'all probably remember that a handful of years ago. We actually had some behavioral health volunteers that went to serve under the auspices of the American Red Cross. Also, H1N1, we had volunteers to help participate and actually get the vaccines. And then we had administrative support with that as well. We also had volunteers to participate in the SC Mission 2010 and 2011. 2010 in Greenville, y'all probably remember that, and then just last year here in Columbia. And also, we had behavioral health volunteers to help out with the Gulf Coast tornadoes back in 2011. And then, of course, Region 7 volunteers down in the Charleston area, they were on call, too, to help with the Haitian Repatriation Act. We have a project. It's called the Acute Care Hospital Surge Project. It's a grant-funded project. We're fixing to go into our third year. It's basically a identified gap with our program. Up to this point, we've prepared our volunteers to operate under public health. We ask for funding through HHS to allow us to be able to work with hospital partners across the state to develop our program to carry volunteers into hospitals for hospital surge capacity. So we want to equip our volunteers to be able to help out our hospitals. We want to identify those needs that the hospitals have and all those concerns that they have too with using the volunteers, address that. We also need, what, uh, need to know what the, the individual volunteer needs as far as education. And then, of course, looking at the ESARVIP database system and what needs maybe are there that need to be incorporated to help meet some of those joint commission standards. And of course, the outcome to this project is basically having verified credentialed volunteers that are ready to augment our hospital and surge. So we're fixing to enter into our last year of that program. Okay, volunteer recruitment, where you may see us. When you go online with the Department of Labor, License, and Regulation, when you renew your license, you're going to see this little blurb at the top of the page. It's in this little golden box or orange box, and it says, are you interested in volunteering for SEDHEX Office of Public Health Preparedness? If so, click here. All that does, it doesn't obligate you. It takes you to our registration page where you can find out more information. But hey, while you're there, if you'd like to register, we would love to have you. And then also, something new, the SEMA Uniform Credentialing Application Program. Also, on that last page of the application, there's going to be volunteer opportunities during emergencies and disasters. And if you're interested in receiving information there about working in a hospital or public health capacity, you would simply click yes, that comes to DHEC, and then we just simply send you more information. So those two places are where you can um, come on board the DHEC volunteer program. Questions and comments? All right, thank you very much.